Welcome back to Sports Talk ATL. I am Chase Earl, joined by Alex or Jake. Just departed us. He didn't want to talk about week one of college football, I guess. Uh, we are going to break this down by conference, starting in the SEC, where we had, obviously, the game of the week in Tuscaloosa versus Texas, where Texas pulls off a convincing win. And Brian Denny, we both thought Alabama was going to be able to handle it more. than, But then again, how much do we really know about these teams coming into it? I mean, this was the first real test and, and across the board you look at the southeastern conference predict particularly the western division i mean what a mess i mean ever this has been the strongest conference in college football for a decade or maybe even longer than that and now it looks like one of the weaker ones i mean not just it, it not just is it weak for the sec it's one of the weaker conferences in college at least it looks that way today maybe texas is amazing maybe florida state certainly looked good again in week two maybe they are actually legit national championship contenders but right now it doesn't look good and that Alabama game, Milrow, uh, that that was the one standout. I mean, he just he can't throw. He can't throw. I mean, it's it's that simple. I mean, he's basically a running back playing quarterback. And I did say the one thing that I was worried about is if Alabama gets down in this game or they can't run the ball like we all expected them to. Texas's defensive line played fantastic. Alabama's offensive line, which is supposed to be one of the best in the country, didn't hold up well at all against the run or the pass. They only averaged 3.8 yards per carry. If you had told me that coming into the game, I would have said there's no way Alabama can win this game, and they didn't. I mean, it's not like Texas offense was super explosive, but they made those plays at the end of the game. And, you know, good for Steve Sarkeesian. I like Steve Sarkeesian. Texas, is, can we finally say they're back? Can we finally say it? Is Are, are we doing it for real this time? Or are they going to go and lose like three big 12 games? I mean, they're as back as maybe they'll ever be. Yeah, congrats to Sarkeesian and the boys and uh, Austin. It was a uh, fun game to watch. Um, Bama's one of those teams where everybody wins when they lose. Um, so I'm sure a lot of people woke up happy on Sunday morning. Um, but I said a lot of people given Tommy Reese um, his his burn. But I want to just kind of defend Alabama and Tommy Reese here for a second and just kind of say, you know, Milrose, your best option is not a great look for that quarterback room. Like he's the guy who came out of camp, uh, the starter. If you're Tommy Reese, you're kind of calling a game like with your one hand tied behind your back because, as Jay said, Milro looked pedestrian throwing the ball and you know maybe it was jitters maybe texas's defense is really good or maybe he's just not that good i don't know what it is but tommy reese was basically having to call a game for a quarterback that couldn't complete a pass uh more than 10 yards down the field and that's a difficult uh task for anybody to do um so i do think that tommy reese could be could be better he could have caught a better game there's no doubt about that but let's let's give some context to the situation that milro was absolutely terrible uh, nobody could have called a better game, uh, called a, a winning game with Milrow at quarterback, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I, that that's my, 100% my biggest takeaway. And I was saying it throughout the entire game. I was like, dude, this guy can't, this guy can't complete a pass. He finally did complete one deep ball. Um, and I know they had that one pit play over the middle that led to a touchdown, but uh, along in the long run, I mean, it's a terrible look for their quarterback room. I don't think they ever wanted Milrow to be the starter. I just think the other guys were just as bad. So yeah, it's, it's not just a bad look on Milrow. It's a bad look on the entire quarterback room. And that's the biggest thing. And listen, in today's era of college football, I know everyone was talking about oh, Alabama's getting back to their identity. We're going to run the ball and play defense guys. That there's a reason why they went away from that identity in the first place. It's not as effective as it was 10 years ago. These offenses are explosive. They spread you out. It's almost impossible. I mean, even look at Georgia, that 2021 defense. Think about all the draft picks that they've sent off that defense that went number one overall and in the first round and everything. Look what Alabama was able to do against them in the SEC championship game because they were able to spread them out and they had receiver and they had Bryce Young. In this era of college football, in this era of football period, with the rules and the, the offenses the way they are and the complexity of it, that doesn't work. You can't just run the ball and, pl and, and play defense and get back to this identity. There's a reason they went away from that. And it does not work in this era of college football anymore. You have to be able – and I'm not saying that you can't run the ball and play defense and win. Obviously, that's a formula for winning. But you have to have a quarterback that can complete passes down the field. Because at some point, just like we talk about Desmond Ritter, even in college football where the, the gap's not as thin as it is in the, as it is in the NFL – you're going to have to make plays with your quarterback. They're going to have to make a play. When you fall behind, they're going to have to make plays on third down. Milrow can't do that. And I don't know if anyone else in that quarterback room can do it, but I can't. I don't know if Nick Saban is going to stick with them, but they have serious questions. Let's move on to some of the other big games. Texas A&M, Miami. Wow. Wow. 
I mean, I'm not going to say I wasn't expecting it. Battle of the underachievers. I wouldn't have been surprised by anything in this game. But Jimbo Fisher, I mean, this guy's got to be. I mean, we talked about him on the hot seat coming into the season. And I know he has that huge contract. But this kind of loss in front of a 50% sold out crowd in Miami where almost no one was there, which is embarrassing in its own right. Hopefully the U can get that fixtured out. I got faith in Mario Cristobal, especially after this game. That's an embarrassing loss, guys, especially the way it happened. Yeah, uh, good for Mario Cristobal and the Hurricanes. Uh, I know everybody always says, you know, college football is better when USC is good and Miami is good. And it's true. They're just fun programs and they've got a uh, really storied past. Uh, really, 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 really big win for Mario Cristobal. He's still building that program up. Uh, Jimbo Fisher and Texas a and I mean, talk about doing less with the most. These guys just brought in a the greatest uh, recruiting class in history. And they are losing. They're floating around 500 last year. This year doesn't look much better. I, I, I don't know what's going on in Aggieland. Uh, Jimbo Fisher is just maybe not it. And we could talk all about, you know, this buyout, that buyout. If somebody can do it, it's the Texas A&M Aggies. They've got, you know, they're sitting on piles of money over there. Uh, I, I really don't think it would be crazy if Jimbo, if Jimbo throws up a couple more stinkers, Look out. That guy could lose his job this year. I, I, mean, I don't think they, they have they have the money to get rid of. I know everyone talks about, oh, we can't. Yeah. Dude, they have more money than anyone. If this it's keeps not a money going thing. the way that it is, yeah, they, they will eventually buy him out. He needs to really bounce back. I think the biggest winner of the weekend, though, has got to be Ole Miss, right? I mean, you yeah. watch Texas A&M lose. You watch Bama lose. You watched LSU lose the week before. You go out there against a good Tulane team and you handle your business. And now all of a sudden we're talking about Ole Miss. Like, are they the best team in the West? I mean, I don't have it. I don't think Ole Miss is this, you know, fantastic team playoff contender or something like that. But when you look across the division, I mean, Ole Miss fans have to be waking up feeling very good about themselves. And obviously I'm a big Lane Kiffin fan. I, I don't love Ole Miss's team, but I love Lane Kiffin. So I like to see them have success. They set up in two weeks. They go, I think into Tuscaloosa. Mm-hmm. I think they go into it. I don't know if it's a home. I think it's into Tuscaloosa and then they play LSU, but they got to be feeling pretty confident this morning. Yeah. I, I love the rebels. Um, they, they, they're just a fun team because Lane Kiffin's a fun guy. Uh, they kind of got dominated in the first half in the trenches, which is pretty embarrassing for, you know, an SEC school to get embarrassed like that by Tulane. But then again, Tulane's been a very, very competitive school here for a few years now. Uh, and then the second half, they showed. Ole Miss had better players, and that's what showed. Uh, they dominated them in the second half. Uh, it's great It's great for Ole Miss and Lane Kiffin because they've been stinky for a long time. Not stinky, but just you know, just so extraordinarily average. They're just average. So, you know, maybe maybe they are the real deal this year. I don't know. But going on to the other side of the SEC, Georgia's offense once again looked uh, rough. Bobo is already getting, you know, Georgia fans are already calling for Bobo to lose his job. And I I, and I do want to say, listen, I want to I want to see Georgia lose as much as the next guy. I'm an LSU fan. <laughs> through We're on Atlanta sports show. Yeah, but I, I do. The fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, Georgia fans need to relax. They need to relax. This is all. This was always going to take time. Bobo's still getting into his own, making it his offense. Carson Beck still getting to his own, making it his offense. Everybody needs to relax. There's enough talent on this team to just skate by. Georgia's not going to lose a regular season game. The only real test they have, I would say, is Tennessee, which is at Tennessee. That's the only real test. They got South Carolina in a couple weeks. And South Carolina is a bad football team. So I, I really don't expect them to, you know, mess up too many. They they would have to really, really mess up not to waltz into Atlanta for the SEC championship. But then again, you know, talking about LSU, talking about Ole Miss, talking about Bama, all these teams that have lost, uh, or, you know, Bama, LSU have lost, the SEC is still wide open. It is anybody's it's anybody's conference, and if you said that at the, at the beginning of the year, people would call you crazy because Georgia Bulldogs look uh, beatable right now. But I, as for Georgia fans, calm down; it'll get better. Yeah, I think I think I said this before the season. I know a lot of people when Todd Monken got hired by the Baltimore Ravens, I said that's that's a huge loss. He's he might have been the best offensive coordinator in college football, and you don't just replace a guy like that. They're like, oh well, Bobo was in the room; he was calling a lot of third downs. I'm like, yeah. Wait and see. Wait and see. And, and the truth is, Mike Bobo, we've seen Mike Bobo before at several different places. No one has ever thought as highly of Mike Bobo as they did 
Todd Munkin. There's a reason why he is in Baltimore and he got that promotion. Hey, if he succeeds in Baltimore, we could be – and look, Baltimore looked really good. I mean, Todd Munkin is a fantastic offensive mind. And then you, you, get, you get a new quarterback, you get a new coordinator. It doesn't necessarily surprise me at all that they're kind of, you know, got some rust. Uh, I think by midseason it will look a lot better. Will it ever look as good, good as it did with Stetson Bennett and Todd Munkin? I do not believe that. But then again, do they need that to win the SEC? Because like we said, look around the SEC. Everybody's getting beat. It's the weakest this conference has been in quite some time. So yeah, Georgia fans, I mean, they should still feel high and mighty. But yeah, there are questions there. They definitely look beatable. I think, you know, maybe it's not a team from the SEC this year, but they definitely look beatable. But hey, you got 15 weeks to figure it out. So yep. calm down. I think they'll be fine. The other game I just want to mention briefly before we uh, move on to the Big Ten is Auburn and Cal. We talked about that kind of being a potential exciting late night matchup between two high powered offenses. They go and give us a 14 to 10 absolute stinker. I don't think either team wanted to win that game, but if you're an Auburn fan, hey, 2 0. It's, it's a lot better. Coming up after the break, we are going to break down the Big Ten and what happened in week 